All right. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence encoded in the Bible. Uh, just a disclaimer, YouTube policy, I got to tell you, I'm not an expert in um, artificial intelligence. I did stay at Holiday Express. I'm just kidding. Uh, I have read a lot of articles and I've looked at both sides of this, the benefits of AI technology and the dangers of AI technology. I've got a lot of questions that have come in about this particular topic, and I want to share with you uh, some of my findings in the codes. And by the way, I am an expert in searching codes, so that is the only field where, uh, you know, um, I know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm simply going to be sharing my my finds with you today. Um and looking at a couple of uh, different things, we're going to look at a video, a very short video from the godfather of AI technology, who is no longer with Google. So I, I hope by showing this video, I'm not going to get in trouble with Google, <laughs> even though it's on uh, YouTube, um, because the guy no longer works there. So I'm going to play that video. We're going to look at an article and then we're going to look at a code and then search possibly another one uh, together because as I was sitting here preparing for this video, I was thinking about deep fake. Uh, and um, that was, that should have been an access term that I looked at. So uh, let's just jump right into it. You guys, we're going to go to a video uh, by the quote Godfather of AI. And hear what this man has to say. And then I'm going to read you an article from uh, a science magazine use of artificial intelligence resonated loudly in Washington and around the world. Vice President Kamala Harris met yesterday with top executives from companies leading in AI development, Microsoft, Google, OpenAI, and Anthropic. The vice president discussed some of the growing risks and told the companies they had a, quote, moral obligation to develop AI safely. That meeting came just days after one of the leading voices in the field of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, announced he was quitting Google over his worries about the future of AI and what it could eventually lead to unchecked. We're going to hear about some of those concerns now with Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, who joins me from London. Thank you for being with us. And what are you free to express now about artificial intelligence that you couldn't express freely when you were employed by Google? It wasn't that I couldn't express it freely when I was employed by Google. It's that inevitably, if you work for a company, you tend to self-censor you tend to think about the impact it will have on the company. And I want to be, to be able to talk about what I now perceive as the risks of super intelligent AI without having to think about the impact on Google. What are those risks as you see it? There are quite a few different risks. Um, there's the risk of producing a lot of fake news so nobody knows what's true anymore. There's the risk of encouraging polarization by getting people to click on things that make them indignant. There's the risk of putting people out of work. That it should be that when we make things more productive, when we greatly increase productivity, it helps everybody. But there's the worry that it might just help the rich. And then there's the risk that I want to talk about. Many other people are talking about those other risks, including risks of bias and discrimination. So I want to talk about a different risk, which is the risk of super intelligent AI taking over control from people. Well, so that would be the main the main risk here. And I just want to be very clear. I am expressing my opinion about this um, because um, there are policies on YouTube. And uh, again, I don't want to, I technically work for Google, so I don't want to cross any boundaries. So that's why I researched both sides of this, whether this was beneficial or whether this is uh, potentially a danger for mankind. So that's the premise of, of our, our discussion today. Uh, I do believe that this is a Pandora's box, again, my opinion, and I, I base this off of some of the some of the experts and what they have said, particularly Elon Musk. OK, so uh, if it is unchecked, I'm in agreement with this expert that it could be a potential danger. But there's all, there's also, I would say, good sides of artificial intelligence uh, here recently i was talking with a colleague about the potential use of ai in searching codes right because we can do that on a quantum level something that humans cannot do and so it's a quite a fascinating topic for me again i am not an expert in ai i am an expert in searching codes and i'm going to give you my analysis of what i found 
here in just a moment. How do the two compare, human or biological intelligence and machine intelligence? That's a very good question, and I have quite a long answer. Um, biological intelligence has evolved to use very little power, so we only use 30 watts, and we have huge numbers of connections, like 100 trillion connections between neurons, and learning consists of changing the strength of those connections. The digital intelligence we've been creating uses a lot of power, like a megawatt when you're trading it. It has far fewer connections, only a trillion, but it can learn much, much more than any one person knows, which suggests that it's a better learning algorithm than what the brain's got. Well, what would smarter than human AI systems do? What's, what's the concern that you have? Well, the question is, what's going to motivate them? Because they could easily manipulate us if they wanted to. Imagine yourself and a two-year-old child. You could ask it, do you want the peas or the cauliflower? And the two-year-old child doesn't realize it doesn't actually have to have either. Um, we know, for example, that you can invade a building in Washington without ever going there yourself by just manipulating people. But imagine something that was much better at manipulating people than any of our current politicians. I suppose the question is then, why would AI want to do that? Wouldn't that require some form of, of sentience? Um, let's not get confused with the issue of sentience. I have a lot to say about sentience, but I don't want to confuse the issue with it. Let me give you one example of why it might want to do that. So suppose you're getting an AI to do something. You give it a goal. And you also give it the ability to create sub-goals. So like if you want to get to the airport, you create a sub-goal of getting a taxi or something to get you to the airport. Now, one thing it will notice quite quickly is that there's a sub-goal that if you can achieve it, makes it easier to achieve all the other goals that you've been given by people. And the sub-goal that makes it easier is get more control, get more power. The more power you have, the easier it is to get things done. So there's the alignment worry. We give it a perfectly reasonable goal. And it decides that, well, in order to achieve that, I'm going to get, get myself a lot more power. And because it's much smarter than us, and because it's trained from everything people ever did, it's read every novel there ever was, it's read Machiavelli, it knows a lot about how to manipulate people. There's the worry that it might start manipulating us into giving it more power, and we might not have a clue what's going on. When you were at the forefront of this technology decades ago, what did you think it might do? What, what were the applications that you had in mind at the time? There's a huge number of very good applications, and that's why it would be a big mistake to stop developing this stuff. It's going to be tremendously useful in medicine. Um, for example, would you rather see a family doctor that had seen a few thousand patients or a family doctor that had seen a few hundred million patients, including many with the same rare disease you have? You can make much better doctors this way. Eric Topol's been talking about that recently. Um, you can make better nanotechnology for solar panels. You can predict floods. You can predict earthquakes. You can do tremendous good with this. Is the problem then the technology or is the problem the, the people? behind it. It's the combination. Um, obviously, many of the organizations developing this technology are defense departments. And defense departments don't necessarily want to build in, be nice to people as the first rule. Um, some defense departments would like to build in, kill people of a particular kind. Um, so we can't expect them all to have good intentions towards all people. There is the question of what to do about it. This technology is advancing far more quickly than governments and societies can keep pace with the capabilities of this technology. I mean, they leap forward every few months. What is required to write legislation, pass legislation, come up with international treaties, that takes years. Yes, so that, I mean, I've gone public to try and encourage um, much more resources and many more creative scientists to get into this area. I think it's an area in which we can actually have international collaboration because the machines taking over is a threat for everybody. It's a threat for the Chinese and for the Americans and for the Europeans, just like a global nuclear war was. And for a global nuclear war, people did actually collaborate to reduce the chances of it. There are other experts in the field of AI who say uh, that the concerns that you're raising, this dystopian future, that it distracts from the very real and immediate risks posed by artificial intelligence, some of which you mentioned, misinformation, fraud, 
uh, d discrimination. How do you respond to that criticism? Yes, I don't want to distract from those. I think they're very important concerns and we should be working on those too. I just want to add this other existential threat of it taking over. And one reason I want to do that is because that's an area in which I think we can get international co collaboration. Is there any turning back when you say that there will come a time when AI is more intelligent than us? Is there any coming back from that? I don't know. Um, we're entering a time of great uncertainty where we're dealing with kinds of things we've never dealt with before. It's as if aliens had landed, but we didn't really take it in because they speak good English. How should we think differently then about artificial intelligence? We should realize that we're probably going to get things more intelligent than us quite soon, and they will be wonderful. They'll be able to do all sorts of things very easily that we find very difficult. So there's huge positive potential in these things, but of course there's also huge negative possibilities. And I think we should put more or less equal resources into developing AI to make it much more powerful and into figuring out how to keep it under control and how to So the expert there is saying that there's potential for both, uh, potential benefits, potential dangers. And again, I'm not an expert in, in AI. Uh, I am an expert in searching codes. And uh, when I did this research, I looked on both sides of this, the dangers and the benefits. And I would encourage you guys uh, to do your own research. Uh, you can get on Google uh, or, you know, DuckDuckGo, whatever, and uh, research, you know, the benefits. There are many videos on YouTube on the benefits of AI technology, as you can see there, I put in um, the search box. I am in agreement with that. I think there's applications, certainly with, you know, what, what I've experienced with YouTube. Uh, YouTube is integrated AI into uh, their platform, and I have used it in helping me with my videos, particularly with thumbnails. You guys remember the thumbnail with um, Kamala Harris and the other black woman that was in there. That It was almost like the AI knew there would be uh, uh, two women, uh, and that was kind of fascinating. Uh, we've we've all seen the videos, you guys. So do your own research. The benefits of AI are definitely there. But on the flip side of that coin, it's obvious that there are so dangers, especially if, if this thing is not have clear and defined boundaries and is uh, is always in check. If you guys think back to the 1980s. And even into the 90s with the different movies that we saw, like War Games. Remember that one? War Games, where uh, the Whopper uh, took over. And uh, do you want to play a game? Remember that? So even way back in the 80s, we saw this uh, potential <coughs> for computers, potentially the um, quantum computers, um, overstepping that boundary, right? So this has always been in a fear of... Uh, you know, human beings with this kind of technology, right? So it's there. And then, of course, the uh, the Skynet, you know, the movies with the Terminator and uh, what, what we see there. Um, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, um, but people in Hollywood were very creative in, in giving us potential outcomes in, in the form of movies of where this could go. Again, um, Elon Musk used the term Pandora's box, right? Uh, but, you know, then there's also the dangers. And again, let me screen, re screenshot this. You can research, you know, the potential dangers and you can find all kinds of uh, articles and videos on potential dangers of it. So it, it's absolutely there. Right now, I want to take you over to an article I found from, what is this? Scientific American. So it's a scientific publication. We're just going to read a little bit from that. And then we're going to look at some codes, right? Here's why AI may be extremely dangerous, whether it's conscious or not. The artificial, uh, the artificial intelligence algorithms will soon reach a point of rapid self-improvement that threatens our ability to control them and pose great potential risk to humanity. Uh, here's the author here. The idea that this stuff could actually get smarter than people, I thought was way off. Obviously, I no longer think that. 
Jeffrey Hinton, who we just saw in the in the previous video, one of the Google's top artificial intelligence scientists, also known as the godfather of AI, said that he quit his job after April so he could warn about the dangers of this technology. He is not the only one worried. A 2023 survey of AI experts found that 36 percent fear that AI development will, excuse me, may result in a nuclear level catastrophe. Again, war games from the 1980s. Can you can you? Kind of see where if we don't have boundaries on this technology, it's potentially uh, could bleed over to something catastrophic like a false nuclear attack, right? Or something along that uh, nat uh, nature. Again, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but the experts have feared that this would be uh, something that we would have to deal with. Almost 28,000 people have signed an uh, uh, open letter written by the future of Life Institute, including uh, Steve Wozniak, Elon Musk, and CEOs of several AI companies, and many other prominent technologies asking for a six-month pause or moratorium on new advanced AI development. As research in consciousness, interesting word, I share these strong concerns about the rapid development of AI, and I am uh, a co-signer of the Future of Life open letter. Why are so why are we all so, so concerned? In short, AI development is going way too fast. The key issue is the profoundly rapid improvement in uh, in conversing among the new crop of advanced chatbots uh, or what we are technically called large language models, LLMs, with this coming AI explosion. We will probably just have one chance to get this right. If we get it wrong, we may not live to tell the tale. This is not hyper, uh, hyperly, hyperbole. This rapid acceleration promises to soon result in artificial generation intelligence, AGI. And when this happens, AI will be able to improve itself with no human intervention. It will do this the same way, for example, Google's AlphaZone AI learned how to play chess better than the very best human or other AI chess players in just nine hours from when it was first turned on. It achieved this feat by playing itself millions and millions of times over. Team, a team of Microsoft researchers analyzing open AI chat GPT-4, which is, I think is the best of the new advanced chatbots currently available, said it had sparks of advanced general intelligence in a new preprint paper. In testing GPT-4, it performed better than 90% of humans uh, test takers on the uniform bar, bar exam, a standardized test used for to certify lawyers for practice in many states. That future was up from just 10% in the previous GPT-3.5 version, which is uh, was trained on smaller data set. They found similar improvements in dozens of other standardized tests. Most of these tests are tests of reasoning, and this is the main reason why Bubek, uh, Bubek and his team concluded that GPT-4 could reasonably be viewed as an early yet still incomplete version of artificial general intelligence, the AGI system. This pace of change is why Hilton, uh, Hinton told the New York Times, look at how, uh, how it was five years ago and how it is now. Take the difference and propagate it forwards. That's scary. In the mid, uh, in in a mid-May Senate hearing on the potential of AI, Sam Altman, the head of OpenAI, called regulation crucial. Once it once AI can improve itself, which may not be more than a few years away, and could in fact already be here now, we have no way of knowing what AI will do or how we can control it. This is because the superintelligent AI, by which definition can surpass humans in a broad range of activities, will, and this is what I worry about the most, be able to run circles around programmers and any other human by manipulating humans to do it, to do its will. That is, that's concerning to me right there, by manipulating humans to do its will. When you got humans manipulating humans, that's a that's a bad thing. But when AI is doing that, what what does this mean? What what does this mean for us? It will also have the capacity 
to act in a virtual world through its electronic connections and to act in a physical world through robot bodies. And I just want to pause right there because some of the concern in our community here in, um, you know, YouTube land is that is there a potential for the spirit realm to interface with the quantum realm, right? And if this happens, if it's possible, what does that mean for mankind, right? Again, Skynet in um, war games back in the 80s, right? This is a very um, trending and common thought right now, especially with those that are that are fearful of AI. This is known as a control problem or the alignment problem. See philosopher Nick Bostrom's book, The Superintelligence for a Good Overview, has been studied and argued about it uh, by philosophers and scientists such as Bostrom, Seth Baum, and Eliezer Yudkowsky for decades now. I think of it this way. Why would you expect a newborn baby to beat a grandmaster in chess? We wouldn't. Similarly, why would we expect to be able to control superintelligent AI systems? No, we won't be able to simply hit the off the switch because superintelligent AI will have thought of every possible way that we might do that and taking actions to present being shut off. Here's another way of looking at it. A super intelligent AI will be able to do in one second what it would take a team of 100 human software engineers a year or more to complete or pick up any task, like designing a new advanced airplane or weapon system. And super intelligent AI could do this in about a second. Other AI systems were built into, uh, into robots they will be able to act in the real world rather than in, only in the virtual or electronic world, right? So we're giving it so hypothetically, if the spirit realm can interface with the quantum realm, all they need is a body, right? They need a body. And will, of course, be able to replicate and improve themselves at a superhuman pace. Any defense or protections will attempt to build into these AI gods, little g, on their, think, remember that word when we look at the code, the AI gods, on their way toward godhood will be anticipated and neutralized with ease by AI once it reaches superintelligent status. This is what it means to be superintelligent. We won't be able to control them because anything we think of, they will have already thought of a million, time, million times faster than us any defense we built in will be undone, like Gulliver throwing off the tiny strands of the Lilliputians used to try to restrain him. Some argue that these LLMs are just automation machines with zero consciousness. Remember that word. The implication being that if they are not conscious, they have less chance of breaking free from their programming. Even if these language models now or in the future are all uh, aren't all aren't at all conscious does it uh, this doesn't matter for the record i agree that it's unlikely that we have any actual consciousness at this juncture though i remain open to facts as they come in regardless a nuclear bomb can kill millions without any consciousness whoso uh, whatsoever in the same way, AI could kill millions with zero consciousness in a myriad of ways, including potentially use of nuclear bombs, either directly, much less likely, or through manipulated human intermediaries, uh, more likely. Sort of like war games, right? The computer had tricked the Russian forces in that movie War Games to believe that we were attacking. That's manipulating the, the situation, right? There was no genuine attack and that was the fear right so the debate about consciousness and ai really don't figure uh, very much into the debates about ai safety yet language models based on chat uh, excuse me gpt4 and many other models are already circulating wild uh, widely but the moratorium being called for is on uh, being called for is to stop development of any new models more powerful than 4.0. And this can be enforced with force if required. Training these more powerful models requires massive server farms and energy, and they can be shut down. 
my my ethical compass tells me that it is a very unwise to create these systems where we know already we won't be able to control them, even in the regulatively in the regulatively near future. And excuse me, in the relatively near future, discernment is knowing when to pull back from the edge. Now that is uh, it. Now is that time. We should not open. Pandora's box any more than it has already been opened. And you guys, that's exactly what um, Elon Musk had said um, some time ago about this potential technology. And again, I'm not an expert in AI. We are exploring the potential dangers of this. And we're going to look now in the codes and see if there's anything um, in this ancient text that will give us some insight in the potential for this so this is not my opinion at this point this is results from the research so i didn't put these results in there they're just there okay so there's that so the table that i want to share with you is artificial intelligence is the term here's my access term this is as the rabbis would say the best meeting because we can't find artificial intelligence as an access term, we can find the best meeting of artificial and intelligence together. And here it is. It's a very small skip of 5326 on the cylinder. This is a very ancient text, you guys. This is the Bible. Here are the terms that uh, I was able to extract from here. Again, I didn't put them here. They are here. Okay, so let's just go with that. All right. Up at the top in the blue, we have Abaddon going across there. We do have the word Nephilim. Nephilim. These are terms that you guys asked me about. Nephilim is here. We also have the word for demons. Remember, uh, Elon Musk talked about demons, right? So we, we look for that word. It is here. It's here at a skip of three. And then down here in the plain text, you can see um, so it's here four times. I did find the word the beast, the beast system here twice, once in this line and then here in um, the black and green on the next line. So um, some of the other terms that we found, this was this was an anomaly that kind of stood out right here. Um, the vertical term here that's connected to this word and this anomaly here, which is an abacus effect in the text. And we're going to look at that with Google Translate of all, right? of all things. We're going to go to Google Translate so I can show you um, in the translator there that what I'm telling you is legit. So let's go to Google. I'm going to type in that vertical anomaly, which is these letters here. Who is above me? Who is above me? And, and again, let's go back to the table. Let me show you where that is. And that is right here. Pippi. No. She doesn't know what YouTube is. Who is above me? Right here. This word here. The Shin Ein Resh Yod Mim. Let's go look at that. Shin Ein Yod Resh Mim. Shin Ein Yod Resh. Wait a minute. Almost misspelled it. It's Gates. Who is above me? right at a 90 degree angle with gates think about that now let's go to what's at the bottom of that look at that real close and then we'll take you back to the translator show you what that is it's an abacus effect we see here six letters mem vav tav aleph dalad mem mem vav tav aleph dalad mem hang tight don't go nowhere. Memvav Tav is death. 
Mem, Vav, Tav, Aleph, Dalit, Mem. Is what it says there. Him and death. Who is above me? Can you imagine AI coming to the point, right? Um, there is no one other and but me, right? Like like Hasatan said. Can you imagine AI getting to the point asking that question? And I'm only speculating of who's asking this question. Who is above me? Is it possible that AI could get to the point where it doesn't want a human above it? Who is above me? Down below there, right? Human death. At the top, gates. We are opening a gate. That's like a Pandora's box, right? Let's go back to the code. Look at some other things here. In the orange, we have the Hebrew word for networking. Uh, I'm going to jump back and forth to the translator because I've asked had some of you ask me to please um, sorry to please annotate my tables in English and that you guys to take it to paint and all that kind of stuff and to put in it, it, it's just too much time in editing to do that you guys some of us are a little better than others at doing that but um, it's easier for me to just do it this way so the word for networking, mem, resh, shin, tav, tav, networking. Some of the other words there, all right, like consciousness, tav, vav, dalad, ein, hey, consciousness. Let me show you where that is in the table. We've got Tav, Bob, Dalit, Ein, Hey. That's running right through the bottom here. That's intersecting with the beast, which is here twice. Also with demons and in the orange, we've got Mem, Chet, Shin, Bet. Mem, Chet, Shin, Bet. Again, let's go over to translator. So, you know, I'm not pulling your leg, right? <laughs> Mem, Chet, Shin, Bet computer that's there twice let me just show you in the orange mem chet shin bet is computer it's also down here mem chet shin bet intelligence in the plain text and also as an els term here again we've got nephilim we've got networking we've got the beast Demons here four times. We've also got consciousness and we have crossing right across. Crossing right across, but also another version of that word right here. And let me take let me take you over to the translator. So you I don't want you to think I'm pulling your leg here. And we're gonna spell that word word out. Right. So that is Tav Vav. Ein bet hey abomination. Abomination is a word that crosses the access term there. Let's go back to the code. Back to the code. And now I want to read a couple of verses. So let's review before we do that. We've got who is above me? The death of humans. Gates that come together at 90 degree angles. <clears throat> We've got abominations that crosses over. Artificial intelligence. We've also got it in the plain text here. <clears throat> and then I've got a verse here that I, I, it's highlighted and one that's marked. I want to go to the marked one. As you can see here, the letters I got highlighted right there. We're going to take a look at that. This is, uh, by the way, we're in the prophets um, in, in this. And this is particularly jeremiah in the 51st chapter and we're going to back up just a little bit to 12 and read from there set a standard upon the walls of babylon and make a watch make the watch strong set up the watchmen prepare the ambushes for yah has devised and done that which he spoke against the inhabitants of babylon 
O thou which dwellest upon many wanders, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. Uh, the Adonai, the, excuse me, Yehua Zabu, has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, and he hath established the world by his wisdom, and stretched out uh, the heaven with his understanding. When he uttered his voice, there was a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, making lightnings with rain, and bringing forth the wind out of, out of his treasures. And when he uttered his voice, excuse me, every man is brutish by his knowledge, every founder is confounded. Here's where it's really interesting. By the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood. There is no breath in them. Think about that. Consciousness, breath in them, robots. You know, if if we're talking about AI robots and, and the sentient uh, type of AI, again, in my opinion here, is it potential for them to turn on us, for AI to turn on us? And I think we can see here, um, Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood. There is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of error. In the time of their visitation, they will perish. Very next line I got highlighted here is in Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 13. Is where we'll start. Uh, excuse me, let me back up here. Wherefore, as I live, saith uh, Yahweh, oh, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all the detestable things and with all thine abominations, right? So it's abominations again. Um, and therefore, will I dis diminish thee, neither shall mine eyes spare thee, neither shall I have any pity. A third part shall die with the pestilence and with famine, and they shall be consumed in the midst of thee, and the third sharp uh, part shall fall by the sword round about thee, and I will scatter a third part into the winds and will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know, and they shall know that I, you will have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations, they that are around about thee in the sight of all that pass by. And, um, you know, it. I only highlighted a couple of verses, but if, if we look at all the places all the way through, over and over again, we see up like down here in Ezekiel, Around the 32nd chapter, we, we see abominations. There's judgment and abominations in this whole thing where, where this is uh, encoded. And by the way, this is the smallest, this is this one of the smaller um, access terms at, at, you know, just over 5,000. 5326 is um, the skip width on that access term. So there's a lot of information here, you guys. And um, as I was preparing for this, I should have um, I should have done a code on this, but I, you know, only thought about it as I was sitting here. And so I was thinking about deep fake, deep fake. Everyone's heard, and this is where we could potentially see misuse of AI. Um, YouTube has a policy that if if deep fake is used or any kind of AI technology is used, we have to put a disclaimer in the video. And some of it is very convincing incredibly convincing you could you could potentially do harm by um in, in, you know implicating someone in a crime um you know i've been seeing videos where there there are people um, in europe where some uh some bad people were making porn with deep fake with the, the the person's image right so this is these are bad ways that ai could be and again as um, the expert said, human beings are at the bottom of this, right? So um, deep fake is another potential 
access term. So how do we spell that? Deep fake. Deep fake. Here's what we're going to look for right here. These eight letters. Let's go to a fresh code program. Clean slate. And look at that. We're going to search that together and see if there's any information on deep fake. Right. So the very first thing we do is go to this key. We're going to search the whole text. I'm going to bring up the virtual keys. I'm going to spell this thing out, right? Deep fake. Is it there? It's there twice. You see how fast? You see how fast a computer did that search? You know how long that would take me to do by hand? It would take me hundreds of years to count all the letters to find these two results. Think of the potential if we used artificial intelligence in a good way to search codes. They call that um, Monte Carlo method is the algorithm where it searches all possibilities simultaneously at once, right? I can't do that. It's not within my capability to, to do that, but potentially, an AI could. So if we wanted to search this, we could choose one. And now we have a new code to search. That's how that works, you guys. A new table. Uh, think of the access term like a combination lock. We're unlocking something that's hidden. We need that sequence of letters to be correct. If I misspell any bit of that, we would not find these results. OK, so it's like combination lock when you, you know, 22 left, 31 right, 37 left. Right. You have to hit it perfectly or you will not unlock it. It's the same thing with these codes. Now we've opened this matrix. Now we have something to search. And it's like this with any search that we do. Personal searches, historical searches, um, any kind of topic. This is how it goes right here. So there we go. Another table to search out deep fake is there you guys is it a pandora's box i don't know i can't give that information you know as an expert i can only give you my opinion and say it's i it, it's you know it's plausible it's plausible if there are not any clear and set boundaries on um, artificial intelligence it could be, be potentially bad but on the flip side of that if there are boundaries, it can be used for good. I think yeah, with saying that, it, it is um, something to consider. It is potentially a Pandora's box. We will just have to see. And we can only pray that um, these experts and these ones that are designing this kind of stuff will do so responsibly and uh, keep us all safe. So. That's what I got for you guys. Artificial intelligence encoded in the Bible. If you're in, if you're interested in searching codes and you want to join the class that we have going right now, uh, it's not too late. Email me. I'll make sure there's a link down below in the video description, and um, we'll talk to you on the phone. We'll get you right in there. I'm currently um, building this class. We've only had a few so far. We're we're still learning the fundamental stuff. We haven't got to searching codes yet, so now's the time. If you want to do this, you feel called to do it. And um, anyone that's fell through this, the cracks, you guys, I'm trying to field every one of uh, the emails that I get. Some of you guys need to check your emails a little more frequently because I've responded. And uh, sometimes it takes you days to get back with me. Then there'll be a phone call. Then we'll get you into the class and we'll go from there. Uh, so you guys, please like, share and share uh, the video. Uh, like, subscribe and share the video. We'll see you in the next one. Shalom to you. May y'all bless.